We are here at Air Venture 2008 with a pilot of an AV-8B Harrier, Major Dave Martin, call sign Doc. Doc, first of all, thank you very much for joining us today on Aero TV. Oh, it's a pleasure to be here. Now, we are standing before a very formidable piece of machinery here. This is the AV-8B Harrier, the latest version of a very storied airframe. Why don't you tell me a little bit about the history of this particular aircraft, if you don't mind? Oh, the airplane here, you know, it's uh, designed as a close air support aircraft, and, you know, it, you know that's what we use it for is... Uh, uh, air support for uh, for, our, for our troops, and um, it, it's a very capable platform. It's uh, a little bit unique as we can uh, take off and land in short distances, and we can uh, actually vertically take off and land as well, as you know. So I'm sure there'll uh, be some clips of that here. Now, this is the latest version of the Harrier. Why don't you tell me a little bit about what makes this plane different than the very first vertical takeoff and landing aircraft that that Hawker produced, which I believe was almost close to 50 years ago that they first experimented with this technology. It, this airplane is uh, pretty unique, and the, the, the new capabilities, it, it has a larger wing, a, uh, a bigger engine in it, and uh, you know, greater vertical takeoff capabilities. And uh, along with that, we can also carry a lot more ordnance than the original versions. How about as far as being a difficult plane to fly? The Harrier does have a reputation for being an extremely hands-on aircraft, and that's probably an understatement. You're smiling like that. Describe to me, if you would, you're 500 feet off the deck. You're coming in for a vertical landing. What are your hands doing? Well, you made a great point. It's a, you know, up and away, it flies like any other, you know, tactical jet aircraft. You know, near the ground is where it, it, it's a lot more difficult to fly. As we're coming in, on, on, uh, on my left hand, I've got two levers. I've got the throttle and I've got the nozzle lever. On, on the right hand, I have the stick. Now, the nozzle lever is unique to the, uh, to the Harrier here. So as I'm coming in, in order to slow down, I'm slowly increasing the nozzles from fully aft to anywhere between 60 and 80 degrees. Now, if I want to do a uh, slow landing, I can keep the nozzles at 60 and I'll land at approximately 60 or 70 knots. Now, what you see out here on the show is the vertical landing where I slowly loop, move the nozzles all the way down to about 80 degrees, and I can actually slow it down and hover at that point. And then the, uh, the throttle is uh, pretty much controlling the airspeed at that point, and then the stick is still your lateral and uh, pitch mo uh, movements. Is it similar in concept to handling a helicopter when you get close to the deck like that? You know, I've, uh, I've never actually flown a helicopter, but I think the controls are quite different. That's what uh, people have told me, so I, I'm not an expert on that by any means. Cirrus Design's Vision SJ50 single-engine personal jet offers exceptional fuel efficiency, flexible seating for up to seven, advanced avionics, and all the Cirrus safety features you expect, including the Cirrus airframe parachute system. With its detailed design, the Cirrus Vision is technologically advanced, yet engineered to be simple to fly to allow owner pilots more lifestyle pursuits than any other personal aircraft. Learn more about the Vision SJ50 at CirrusDesign.com.
Now, let's talk about the specific role that this plane plays. This, obviously, just by looking at it, you can tell that this is an airplane that's intended to get a little down and dirty. This isn't something like an F-A-18 that's, that's flying along, firing a missile at another aircraft. You guys are in the fight, especially in the, I know you've served uh, time over in Iraq. Describe the role that this aircraft plays to support our troops on the ground. Well, like I said, it's it, it's an attack aircraft, not a fighter aircraft, and, and that's exactly what it's built for. We uh, we provide firepower uh, to support the Marines on the ground, and that comes, we can carry anything from uh, bombs, rockets, guns, you know, missiles, all sorts of stuff that, you know, we can use for in the uh, air-to-surface role, and that's, uh, that's what it's built for, and it does an outstanding job. Now, a caveat to that, we do have the ability to carry, uh, you know, air-to-air -air missiles as well and we have a limited capability uh, but like you said there, there's more capable platforms that do that and we are uh, focused on the air-to-ground role. How long does a typical Harrier sortie last when you're in a combat zone? It depends. We, uh, we have these pylons that we can carry drop tanks and if we carry drop tanks we'll uh, go anywhere from an hour and a half to two hours. Without them our uh, normal sortie rate is about an hour at a tactical airspeed. Along with that, though, uh, we normally use the C-130, another Marine Corps aircraft that we, uh, we do air-to-air -air refueling off of, and they can extend our missions uh, pretty significantly out there as well. What is your favorite thing about the air show so far, other than your performance, of course? Well, you know, just to, uh, just to get out there and meet and greet everybody. You know, like you said, it's my first time here. I've been wanting to come here for about, I don't know, 15 years just to see the show, let alone fly in it. So it's a good time just to, uh, to get out intermingle with everybody and uh, just meet all the aviation folks out there. So, having a great time. Okay, we are cleared for our approach. Have our Garmin GPS set up to fly the LPV. And look, here comes the glide path. And you're probably wondering how we can intercept a glide path when there's no ILS on the field. Well, hey, that's the beauty of WASP GPS. No ILS, no localizer, no problem. WASP gives us full vertical guidance even without ground-based navbase. Okay, next you're probably wondering why there's spit all over your side of the windshield. I, I just can't get past this, the amazing power that this jet possesses. And obviously, th this is the single loudest aircraft at Air Venture. I don't even think the Rocket Razor comes close to it on pure decibels. What does it feel like to be in control of that much power, that much raw energy in this aircraft? Well, first thing, it's real quiet where I sit. I don't know what, you know, <laughs> it's not that noisy. But, uh, no, it, it's, uh, it's actually incredible. I mean, the first couple times you fly it, I, I was just taken back. Uh, you, have, you have to think a lot quicker. When, you know, you, you throw the throttle up, and uh, you're going to get going real quick. It, it, it's quite a feeling, really. I mean, there's a reason why we don't need a catapult to get this thing off a ship. It, you know, it accelerates quite, quite rapidly, so... Well, I notice on your uh, climb out at the, near the end of your performance, I can't get over once you make the transition from vertical to horizontal thrust, you vector the, no the thrust nozzles into the, vert uh, into the horizontal position, rather, how steeply you can climb out. How much speed are you making at that point as you climb out above the deck? Well, believe it or not, I, can, I was holding the nose at about 30 degrees nose up, and I was still accelerating at a, a pretty good clip. You know, I, uh, I went from zero to, you know, about 150 knots in you know, a matter of few seconds so you know it it climbs way pretty good he says modestly well doc we very much appreciate the time that you spent with aero tv and above all thank you for your service to our country sir 